Hello everyone. Uh, I wanted to do another book trailer today. Uh, this will be my second one. Big excitement for me. Um, for a book I have coming out uh, towards the end of October 2018, so in a few weeks now. Um, this one is Pagan Portals the Dagda, meeting the good god of Ireland. Um, I had a couple reasons why I'd wanted to write this book. And I was actually really excited when my publisher agreed to go forward with it because the Dagda is one of those gods who he is gaining some popularity now but for a while he was a little bit more obscure on the more obscure end of things so I hadn't been entirely sure if my publisher would go ahead with this project um, but luckily for me Moon Books is awesome and uh, they were enthusiastic about it so was I, of course, and they gave me the green light, so here it is. Um, Pagan Portals of Dagda, much like every Pagan Portals book, the um, point with this is to offer sort of a basic introduction. It's obviously a fairly short book. Uh, let me double check the page count here. Um, yep, with the bibliography, it's 77 pages printed. Um, that really is how this particular series works. It's not meant to be a super in-depth, complicated uh, treatise on a particular subject. It is intended to be an introduction for people who are not familiar with the topic or people who are familiar with the topic but are looking for a good solid um, grounding in the material, or at least that's my particular approach to it. So um, when I do the Pagan Portals, I've done quite a few of them at this point because I really like writing Pagan Portals. Um, my approach tends to be to um, start off with sort of, I don't know if I can get this on the screen, to start off with an introduction which is looking at, at who is this deity. Um, and a lot of times in that I'll include um, who they're connected to or related to, um, in what we would generally term the pantheon. I kind of don't like that term when it comes to the Irish gods, but we'll just use it for our purposes here. So looking at who he's connected to or related to in the pantheon, sort of um, what his position is uh, within um, his own group of deities, if you will, uh, what he looks like if we have a physical description for him, which in his case we do, um, you know, sort of what he's generally known for, that sort of thing. So it's, it's just a basic, who is this deity? Uh, which in the case of the Dagda is, is super interesting, at least to me. Um, and then chapter two, we have, who is the Dagda in mythology? Um, and that is a super, super important topic. In this case, it's one of the longer chapters in the book. I think a lot of people underestimate how much the Dagda shows up in Irish mythology. Uh, he actually is one of the more pivotal deities, and he shows up in a lot of the stories, and um, a lot of times he is a really important uh, major character, if you will. And I think sometimes in modern um, paganism and just in in our modern understanding of who the different uh, Irish gods are, people are usually aware that the Dagda is important, but I don't think they always understand in context um, how important he was and really how um, important he was at really pivotal points for the um, Tuatha Dé Danann. And um, when we look at his role in mythology and we look through um, specifically his different appearances in different stories, you really start to see um, how vital he is. Uh, and yes, he is one of the high kings of the gods at one point, but even when he's not the king, um, he, he's still just a very important figure. Uh, and that's something that gets underestimated. Um, so I think that chapter in particular is, is a really important one in the book. And I'm not just saying that because I wrote the book. Um, I think it's important for everyone who's really interested in the subject to track down and read the original stories 
um, that all of this references. He also has a lot of things that come up in his myths that um, modern audiences and modern pagans are often not aware of. Um, it's something that I see a lot uh, among the modern audience, if you will. There's this sort of cherry picking of the myths where people, um, if they're familiar with the stories, will be familiar with particular um, highlights, uh, major stories, um, the Kahmoi Torah, uh, the Kath Torah, um, sometimes different material from the um, the Verkvala Aaron, um, you know, sort of like the, the major events, if you will, in the timeline of the gods. But a lot of times people aren't aware of exactly how much Irish mythology um, we have, um, even the material that's just already been translated. And so a lot of the myths tend to, to fall by the wayside, if you will, for the, the mainstream audiences. So people might um, be aware of, of certain stories he appears in, but not be aware of really the bulk of the Dagda's mythology. So I have a whole chapter dealing with that and all the different places he shows up. Um, and let's see, chapter three, we get into the Dagda's possessions and associations. That's another thing um, that, again, in modern audiences, like everyone pretty much, I think, is aware that the Dagda has um, one of the four treasures of the gods. He has the Cauldron of Plenty, as it's often called in English. It's not actually what it's called in Irish, but no point getting into that in the book trailer. Um, and we know that he has certain associations, but there's actually a lot more to him and a lot more that he's associated with. Uh, so I have a whole chapter that kind of gets into that. Um, and then chapter four is the Dagda as the good god of all skills. And that really gets into um, what his particular purviews are. And again, in modern terms, we tend to pigeonhole him a little bit. Um, he got his name because he claimed to be able to do everything that all of the other gods were claiming they could do um, in a couple different battle situations. And most people, I think, are aware of that, but we tend to sort of gloss over it a little bit um, and focus in on him in very specific roles. Um, so that chapter really sort of untangles, if you will, um, what we see him doing in the mythology um, and what his roles really are, um, what his powers really are, what he seems to be able to influence um, and control, if you will. Um, that was a really fun chapter to write, by the way. Um, and then chapter five is the Dagda in the modern world. So that gets into some of the more um, modern uh, folklore and uh, modern stories associated with him, writings by modern authors, his appearances in video games, television shows, things like that, and just sort of how um, his image and the way that people uh, associate with him has evolved and developed into the 21st century, and sort of why that's important um, to people who are seeking to understand him. And then, of course, we have a conclusion, and uh, there's two appendixes in this particular book, appendices, sorry. Um, the first one is a resource guide, and then the second one is something that people have uh, been asking for uh, since I first started writing the Pagan Portals, which is a pronunciation guide. Um, and in this particular one, I just want to double check quickly, I do include the Old Irish and the Modern Irish. Um, they are um, not precise pronunciations. Um, I don't use the IPA phonetics because I find a lot of people have trouble reading that. If you're not already familiar with it, I give sort of um, equivalent pronunciations. Uh, modern Irish has multiple dialects, so again, I'm, I'm giving the ones that I'm the most familiar with. Um, and, you know, the Old Irish, again, uh, I'm giving it as I've learned it, which is coming uh, through good old-fashioned book learning. Um, but it, it does have a pronunciation guide for people who want to know how to pronounce the names 
uh, at least more or less generally correctly. So, Pagan Portals the Dagda. This is my little very long, <laughs> unintentionally long, um, 10 minute book trailer. This will be out in a couple weeks for all of you who have been really um, looking forward to something that digs into specifically who the Dagda is. Um, you want to get to know him a little bit better. Uh, and each chapter ends um, the way I do all of my pagan portals with um, a few paragraphs or so on the Dagda in my life, my personal experiences with him in actual practice for people who want something that's not just dry and academic and scholarly. I toss that in as well. For people who do like this book, and I hope you do like this book when it comes out, uh, there's also a Dagda anthology that should be coming out fairly soon. Um, you can search for it online. I have three, I believe, uh, pieces in that one. Um, those are translation pieces with um, commentary about the Dagda's role in those three myths um, and what we can sort of um, take away from those stories and his position in those stories. It does not just have stuff by me, of course. I'm just mentioning it in case you like this and you want to look up the anthology. It also has lots of other awesome stuff from lots of other awesome people. Uh, it's coming out by Eel and Otter Press. That might actually be Otter and Eel Press. I am dyslexic, so I do reverse names like that. Um, but keep an eye out for that as well. If you like this, um, check that out. And I will post a link uh, in the comments of the video for um, this and for the forthcoming Dagda anthology. So, a couple weeks, this will be available for purchase. Hope you enjoy it. Have a good day.